Hello there, Ray here, and today we will be talking all about AFK fish farms using the Skulk sensor, as well as what you can and cannot do with them, and some crazy ways we found to get around it. And as always, you can find more simple farms with the playlist down in my description. I update all the titles to show the working versions. Before we get started looking at these weird designs, I want to thank everybody for subscribing as we just reached 200,000 subscribers, and I put a special notice in my community tab. So if you want to take part in the upcoming video, make sure you guys are subscribed, as well as you turn notifications on with the bell. Now the current best AFK fish farm for getting treasure is this one here. To get treasure enchantment, you need to have an area which is considered to be open water. It needs to be 5x5 five five with at least 2 blocks deep of water and at least 2 blocks of air above it in a 5x5. Five five. You can see because of this, the farm is quite a bit bigger compared to if you do not, then you can just use a simple farm like this where you aim right here on the edge of the pressure plate. And then as soon as a fish bites, you'll see the pressure plate will go back up. And then you'll be able to pull in the fish like that but the amount of good stuff that you lose out by not having open water is quite a bit so to have everyone with treasure is very desirable and with the new skulk sensor it might be possible for us to make this even better when the new skulk sensor was added into the game we got onto our testing server and did a ton of testing with it including trying to make a new type of afk fish farm those streams are a lot of fun. I'm able to play with you guys and you guys can see the entire process that I take to build these type of farms. So thanks everybody who joins those streams. And even though we don't have a new snapshot today, I will be doing another testing stream this Wednesday. So join my Twitch stream down below. Skulk sensor is a new redstone device that can detect events that happen within the sphere. So if I would like drop my bobber right here, you can see it activates particles which move towards the skulk sensor and then we'll put out redstone signal strength depending on how far away it happened or it'll put out a consistent redstone power if a comparator is hooked up to it and that signal strength will always represent the type of event that occurred now there's tons of different things that it can detect we're curious how you can make a trap or a secret entrance that only goes off for a certain event check out my previous video on that but for today we are just looking at anything related to do with fishing so there's three main events that kind of associate with fishing we got we got the splashing event which is a signal strength of six we also got casting a fishing rod as well as reeling in a fishing rod which are 14 and 15. So the first thing we tried was to see if the skulk sensor could detect the bobber when it got closer to it so here we have a sensor down here and they can detect up to eight blocks we got one two three four five six seven eight so anything that happens in this block here it will be able to detect it anything happens here it won't so let's hook up a piston right here so that we can see when it activates itself so we'll throw our fishing rod in they're currently glitched in this version but you can see just the bobber sitting there going up and down is activating the skulk sensor. So to see what it's actually activating, we got a comparator here hooked up to this skulk sensor. You can put a block in between, it'll work just fine. And let's go ahead and activate our fishing rod. And you can see the power source is making it pretty far. Make it all the way to here. That is a signal strength of six. You can see that on the right hand side. And a signal of six means that it is splashing. And it does look like it's splashing. You can see little splashing particles and also some bubbles around it as well. And this happens with any entity that sits in the water. You can see this also activates it with me standing in it. So just having the bobber there isn't going to help us because it's constantly going to make this splashing. This is constantly going to put off signals despite there not actually being a fish pulling it down. But what if we add another piece of water here? Now, if we have our bobber on top, he's going to be splashing because we're too far away for it to be detected. Maybe if he pulls it down, it'll be close enough so that it will be detected. You can see right there, I got a fish nibble and it pulled it down. But once the bobber went underneath the water, it no longer made splashing. And Tiz Awesome Miss looked into the Minecraft code to see exactly when it actually produces the splash. And it's when the entity leaves the water for one game tick and then enters it. That's when it produces that splash event. If we go ahead and go into our settings and turn on subtitles, we can actually kind of see every time it happens, the word splash will become bright again and then it'll slowly fade. Every time it comes bright again, essentially another splash is occurring. Now, when the bobber actually gets pulled all the way down, once it's in the water, it doesn't produce that splash because it was never actually in the air beforehand. It's in water and it just continues to be inside of water. And you can also see there is fishing bobber splash, and that is the one that where the fish are actually pulling it down. That one doesn't get detected by the skulk sensor. And this is actually an intended feature. In this bug report here, you can see it's marked worked as intended. And this is probably because they don't want treasure, loot, AFK fishing to be too overpowered. So there is some other types of splashing that kind of occur when the person is fishing. So here I have a bunch of sensors spaced out just far enough so they can't detect this actual bobber splashing, but they'll detect any other splashing in the area. 
Now notice when a fish comes here to try to bite, it produces these little particles coming at the fishing rod. You can see this fish coming from underneath here, going towards it. But these little particles aren't actually activating any of the skulk sensors. These aren't like the splashing event. So if there was some way for us to get the bobber to have a fish bite it and then have it make a splashing noise only when there is a fish biting onto it, then we can make an AFK treasure loot fishing farm. The idea was to have the bobber sit on top of some water and then once a fish bites, it pulls it down and then it touches some other water which makes a splashing noise. And then we can detect that by the skulk sensor underneath. Now here you can see since the bobber is always in water, it's not going to make any new splashing down there. So if we go over here and if we actually make floating water piece right here and we use the same trick as our last AFK fish farm, or we have a sticky piston trying to pull something that it cannot and you can see it ends up with this centerpiece here being a floating piece and we also made the water sources far away so that by the time it gets here it is very thin so it's easy for the bobber to get pulled through it because when a fish bites onto the bobber sometimes it pulls it down just a little bit sometimes it pulls it down a lot if it only pulls it down a little bit it can't make it through a full solid water source but after a lot of testing we found out this width here is perfect for not only keeping the bobber from falling through it when it falls onto it but also make sure it gets pulled through it once a fish bites we also put water sources on both sides to try to make it so there's no flowing water. If you throw it in flowing water, the bobber will flow with the water. They wanted to keep it stationary. Now you can see this seems to work. We got the bobber here. Once a uh, fish bites onto it, pulls it down, touches that water source, that produces a splashing right there on top when it makes that transition. And that activates the skulk sensor, which comes over here and activates our trap door. So we could reel in and then reel back out. So now the question is, well, we see it's working, but is it actually going to give us the treasure loot if we pull it in? Let's go ahead and just give it one test. I got a really OP fishing rod, so it doesn't take long for us to get a nibble. And you can see I got a normal fish, So that's not part of the treasure loot. So Random Games and Eco Builder actually made me a data pack. That will show when a fish bites if it's going to be treasure loot or not. So let's just go over here. I can kind of illustrate how it works. So if we throw it out, it's going to make these green particles. But the green particles really don't mean anything. Only when the fish bites, you can see once he, once he bit and the bobber went down, how it did not turn into green particles. Because that is not an area where we could get treasure loot. So if I go here where this is a lot of open area, we should be able to get particles even when it's pulled downwards. So here we got the bobber, the fish is going to pull, you can see particles are down there. That means we would get treasure loot if we pulled in then. So a very helpful little data pack to help us test our farms out. So if we test out this farm here, you can see it's actually not producing any particles even when it's on top. And when it gets pulled down, it's not producing particles. And if we leave it here and it gets pulled down, we can see it doesn't produce particles. And that's because to be considered open water, it needs to have that two air gap high above this and a five by five around it. So this water here and this water here and here, this is all affecting it, preventing this lower piece from being considered open water. So we got another setup over here. You can see there is two blocks of air above all of this water here. We also got the two deep waters. The idea behind this one is that we would put the bobber up here. We'd get a nibble. But then we would have the bobber drop into an area that is considered open water. Only then would we reel in the fishing rod. That way we get the splash that we need. Plus we also get the open water that we need in order to get the treasure loot. We thought we could do a similar trick as our old fish farm, which broke in the snapshots of 1.16. But it has a really cool concept, which is the bobber can get pulled through this water. And when it does, it'll end up on top of this boat here. And even though it's on top of a boat and not in the water at all, if I would just reel in, you can see that I actually got a fish and the fish went down into here. The idea is to kind of do this, but instead of making it land on a boat, make it land in a area that is open water. That way when we reel it in, only then will it check to see if we get normal loot or if we could have a chance of getting treasure. Because it only does this check when you reel it in and not when it's pulled down. And that was a change that was made to prevent this type of farm from us getting treasure loot. So if we have our fishing bobber in this one, you can see when it gets pulled down, it's still going to produce the green particles. That was a nibble right there. 
So this is considered open water because we have plenty of air above it and we have enough water in here. Entities like boats don't affect it, but they do allow us to control the bobber. Essentially the bobber can't go down too deep because it's colliding with the hitbox of the boat. You can see the boat hitbox and the bobber and it can't go down any farther than that. So the same idea with this one, we would go ahead and put our bobber in this piece of water above. We also made this one float by using that piston trick. And you can see when it pulls down, it ends up down here. It does make the splashing noise, which the skulk sensor down here detects when it makes that transition from the top water to the second water. But you notice there is a problem, which is the green particles. That's the way we know that if it's working or not. There's no green particles, no green particles, no green particles. Only when it comes back to the surface is there any particles. But there seems to be kind of a delay before it can detect that it's inside of open water. Because once it lands down here, it doesn't produce any green particles until it surfaces once again. So if I would pull in the fishing rod, you can see that we get just normal loot. And if I leave the bobber as long as possible before pulling it in, you see that right now if I pull it in, I don't get anything because I lost it. But technically that would have been a treasure loot. What happens is that the bobber gets pulled down into the water. The bobber falls down into this one, but it doesn't really detect that it's in open water. And by the time it does, then it's already too late and the fish is off of it. So you might think, well, that is it. And we tried everything and Mojang got us good. But I actually had another idea, which is a little bit stranger has to do with the splashing noise being associated with the fish pulling down. The idea behind this one is that we keep the skulk sensor hidden from the normal splashing that's going on in the fishing. And only after a certain period of time do we open up the skulk sensor to detect the next splashing that occurs. So the time that we wait is the same time that we wait with our previous AFK fish farm, which is 95 game ticks. This is the ideal time to be able to randomly pull in your fishing rod and have the highest chance of catching something. So rather than always pulling in exactly at 95 game ticks, we only pull in after 95 game ticks plus the skulk sensor noticing that a splashing has occurred. Now it could just be a normal splash that the bobber makes or it could be the fish pulling down splash. So to figure out if this is better than always really in at a certain time, we need to figure out how often does the bobber splash in the water. This is because what we're essentially doing is giving a larger window for us to catch fish. They might think that, well, this obviously has to be better because we're giving a period of time like right now, you can see how it got pulled down and activated at the same time. That All that extra time there gave us a successful nibble. And therefore, it just has to be better than just randomly pulling in. But the thing is, when you randomly pull in, you are pulling in at a precise time. But you could be reeling in at the same period that a fish is nibbling. A fish nibble doesn't just, doesn't just happen for one game tick. Tiz also just checked the Minecraft code and the fish nibbling can be between 20 and 40 game ticks. So one to two seconds, which is quite a bit of time. And on average, it's a two and a half second time span. So if a fish nibbles on a bobber and then five game ticks later, you do your normal real in time, you still get access to that fish that happened five game ticks ahead of time. So with the previous fish farm having a window of 30 game ticks, let's see what type of window we have with the splashing technique. All we need to do is count how many splashes normally occur per minute and compare that. Currently really isn't a way to automate the process of counting splashes with a command. And in the code, the splashing event is relative to the splashing noise. So it's a good indicator. So I'm just going to count the times that the splash subtitle over there gets brighter. So after a bunch of counting, I got 49 splashes in one minute. So if we take 49 divided by the 60 seconds that occurs, you can see splash occurs just under one every second. So if we would times this 20, which is the number of game ticks per second, you see on average it's about 16 game ticks, where a fish nibbling on the line on average will last 30 game ticks. And because the 30 game ticks is a lot bigger window, for you to catch anything that would happen to be on your line. In theory, you should get more loot using our previous fish farm than using the new one using the skulk sensor and the splashing detection. Eco Builder, Feed em Fish, as well as Ali the Coder also helped look into the bobber mechanics. So big thanks to them. So I did some AFK fishing on our 1.16 treasure loot design. I did about 45 minutes worth of fishing and I got 61 items. And for the same period of time, I was fishing at this fish farm that uses a skulk sensor detecting the flashing. And you can see that I got around 59 items. So very close to the other one. 
but these were just short periods of test. So it could be a little bit of randomness in there. So we'll need to do some more testing to see if this is a viable option. But in theory, we would expect the 1.16 fish farm to do better. Now another reason why this farm can underperform the other one is because when the fish actually pulls down the bobber, and during this period where it's down in the water, it doesn't produce any bubbles. So if the skulk sensor would be open during that period, it wouldn't actually know that there is a fish on the line. Where with the other design, you would just pull it in. But this one, you would have to wait for the bobber to go back up again to make a little bobbing noise before the player would pull it in. By that time, the fish would no longer be on it. So you actually lose on all that time that the fish is pulling the bobber down because it's not producing splashing. I'd love to hear what you guys think about this and if you have any other ideas on how we could detect the bobber with the skulk sensor. Because the bobber, once it goes into the water and is doing its like fishing thing, it really doesn't interact with anything else going around it. Like normally you're not able to place blocks if there's an entity in front of your face, but you can see I can actually click through this bobber here and place blocks behind it. So it is very different and most things that you would think would work don't. So like even placing blocks can be placed directly inside of the bobber. If you guys do enjoy these videos where we try to push the limits of the game, make sure to show it with a thumbs up and share it with others so they learn the challenges of using skulk sensors. I would like to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!